Dear TG, yesterday was my godparent son's wedding, as my brain, the recent recipient of well over a dozen hard alcoholic drinks, tried to make sense of the world around me. I briefly began to ponder the nature of life in a world of technological wizardry and base human sins. Then I drunk dialed my girlfriend and took a gigantic shit. I guess where I'm going with this is, shadow run story time. So, the story picks up a few months after the last run was finished, as the team took a well deserved winter vacation off their profits from the Jet Black run. Darius and George and Jet Black, themselves, went off to establish their own independent record label. With Black operating under a pseudonym because it would cause kind of a stir if Kurt Cobain's ghost just up and bought himself a rap label, and this was basically the equivalent. During Geppetto's vacation, Geppetto died, came back as something much worse, ate a bunch of homeless people's souls, and joined a magical group in the Italian Mafia, the Merlins. During Dervish's vacation, Dervish learned a little bit about his past namely that he was a hitman then, too, started training under a dirty ass Mexican pit fighter in the Barrens, and moved in with Geppetto as a roommate. To quote one of my own players, it's Banshee and Rocker Talk, together at home. Dervish dicked off around the house for about a month, annoying the neighbors by watching porn at full blast, texting through neighborhood watch meetings, and taking his pimped out motorcycle for 3am rides. During 2D's vacation, 2D called a truce with Evo Biomedical Seattle, moved with his psychopathic Jagalo girlfriend to a wind farm in Snahamish, and nearly killed himself to give birth to a free sprite. He vows to raise the little tyke like a real boy, which is kind of difficult when 2D's son. Trigger named for the fact that he was mostly derived from an aiming auto soft from a Doberman combat drone, is temporarily housed in his toaster for lack of a better body. He also hung out with John, his ghoul friend, as thanks for saving Geppetto's life. During Tank's vacation, he got the piss shot out of him by the runner team of a fixer head wronged, and spent the better part of two weeks in intensive care. His poor, adorable little sister, Ariana, returned home from elementary school to find her pleasant suburban house a smoldering blood-stained wreck, surrounded by night-errant officers. Did you guys ever watch the Venture Brothers? Where there was that scene with all the normally heartless supervillains chipping in to help Barn raise the monarch's hideout out of the goodness of their hearts. When Ariana, sobbing and alone, called up the only emergency contacts on Tank's Fonahus running team it turned into that. 2D, Dervish, and Geppetto would give this little girl a place to live, goddammit, or they weren't morally questionable mercenaries. Because, you see, if they didn't do this, they'd just be pure evil, not questionable. The rail thin Channa, the creepy albino elf in the black suit, and the buff as shit rocket orc were not exactly well received by Tank's nosy neighbors. The cops were called for fear of how sketch the team was, but luckily Geppetto had a nice chat with an officer about how we were just rebuilding this poor little girl's home. It occurred to me briefly that we were probably giving Ariana an incredibly stilted view of the altruism of shadow runners, but whatever, she was adorable and deserved it. While we were working on refurbishing the bullet strewn wall paneling, Ariana brought up a problem at home that she was having. We were almost eager to hear about the inconsequential problems of a child as opposed to the often murderous demands of the Mr. Johnson of the week. So, putting aside partially finished modular furniture for a soy calf break or, for Geppetto, utility guy down the street whose body would never be found break, we sat her down and asked her what was up. Ariana was almost out of elementary school, and Tank had paid the school good money to ignore the fact that she was sinless. However, her grades were stellar, so she wanted to apply to a private prep school for middle school. The problem here, of course, was that she needed a legitimate sin, because bribes won't cut it at a prep school. She wanted to go down to the sin registry and get chipped, but there was a problem. She was a minor, and thus she had to be legally in the custody of an adult with a sin. So, Tank would have to get a sin too, which was very bad for business. Wanting to help the adorable little girl follow her dreams, but not wanting to gimp poor Tank. The runners approached a corrupt bureaucrat within the sin registry as referred to them by Danny the Fixer with a special request. Just read these in the archives. Bring it on, man. I need inspiration for the game I'm assuredly going to run in the next week or so. Feel free to keep a running commentary going, by the by. Otherwise this shit autosuggers way before I can finish the story. The 4chan model does not smile upon story time format threads. We wanted to get a fake sin under Tank's real identity. That way, he could keep the sin for as long as it took for the prep school to do a background check on Ariana, then scrap it. His identity would only be vulnerable for a small window. 
A quick call to Tank and the hospital, who confirmed that he liked this plan, and the job was on. The sin, as it turned out, was expensive. Enough so that Tank couldn't afford it and the team had to pay for it for him while he was getting released from the hospital. But, we figured ITD hold up when Ariana got interviewed. We set up an interview appointment with an agent from the prep school, to make sure that everything was in order and help Ariana give off a good impression. Unfortunately, when the interviewer, a shrewish looking woman in a beige skirt suit, scanned Tank's spanking new sin, she rolled nothing but hits, and he rolled a critical glitch. Twice, having attempted to edge the first glitch. Luckily, she didn't realize it was a fake, because it was under his real biometrics. What she did realize was that this poor man's sin had an error, and she had better call the registry to get him reinstantiated right away. Two police officers escorted Tank down to the SIN registry as Ariana began the interview. This is where 2D called the registry contact, a conversation that both began and ended with him screaming give us our fucking money back. So, Tank and Ariana got SINs. Which was great for Ariana's scholarly career she had aced the interview, except Tank had yet to break it to his tiny sister that there was a running team out for his blood who could now, without a doubt, identify her as a blood relation whom he loved very much. After a quick deliberation, 2D basically browbeat Geppetto into accepting Tank and Ariana as two more roommates Dervish having already moved in, because it was either Geppetto's or his place, and a wind farm with a glass facade in front, a hacker gang a couple living within, an infectious cannibal zombie best friend who stopped by periodically, a baby eye with no sense of right and wrong compiling in the kitchen, and a home node filled with gyro pornography was neither a healthy nor safe place to raise a child. Geppetto relented that, yes, an inconspicuous house in the suburbs was probably a better place to hide Tank and his sister from murderous shadow runners than the fucking Jagalo 4chan wind farm TM. Even if he didn't particularly relish four people, one of whom was a gigantic troll, living in his modest home. This marks the end of my notes for this story time, so expect me to go a little slower as I type everything out. After the little vacation was shattered by the move in of a fuckhoog troll and a tiny little girl to Geppetto's place, Danny got in contact with the team again. Danny had been so impressed by the team's performance during the last completely out of their league corp run, that he decided to line them up another completely out of their league corp run. He assured the team that, no, it wasn't something stupidly dangerous like an extraction or a data steal, and no, Horizon was not involved, not in the slightest. Seriously, Geppetto, Horizon isn't involved, stop being paranoid. Geppetto contacted his former boss at Roz, Bradford Nice, a charismatic, manipulative, rich, middle management fuck one of our nicer contacts, if I do say so myself, to see if Nice knew anyone who could get us good suits for the Johnson meat, which was in the private suite in the eye of the needle restaurant. Nice referred us to a tailor, and also asked us to keep him in the loop on our next mission. Not suspicious at all, no sorry Bob. No it probably didn't seem so at the time, but damn, that tank dead man trout is just the obligatory comic relief. He really was. When he eventually dropped out of the campaign, we had a long stretch of super serious 80s tier grimdark, followed by a few of us rolling new, slightly more pink mohawk characters to make up for the void. Our current hacker wears a clown mask and our current mage is a Mexican dude with a truth from GTA San Andreas tier paranoia. Dervish is the only OG left around, and he's seen some shit, dude. But I get ahead of myself. So the Johnson is a human with a lot of social and combat wear, most of it Delta at the very least. He introduces himself over stakes as a hostage negotiations expert for ours. Normally it's in the best interests of the Johnson to stay deniable, but in this case his identity was unavoidable. You see, we needed to retrieve the daughter of one Mr. Wilkins, a high level Ra's regional head. Helen Wilkins had been kidnapped in broad daylight, along with her backpack, Cone Link, and Scottish what? Terrier Pluton, off the streets of the Seattle Ra's Compounds Elementary School. Ra's didn't know how, but somehow Horizon had nabbed footage of the whole thing and was pulling a concerned citizen act by plastering her face all over everything. In the process making Raz out to look inept and weak. Mr. Johnson was not a fan of this. Our job was to retrieve Helen Wilkins from her captors, with a bonus for the retrieval of the school supplies comb link or the dog. The job was fishy from the start, but it's hard to say no to 30 grand in Dan Raz's discounted expense account. Well, now we knew why Bradford Nice was interested, at the very least. But we still didn't smell a rat. Or, rather, we all smelled the rat maybe not tank, but the smell of the new yen in the expense account was a lot nicer. 
2D kitted out his drones with new guns and tack cloaks. Tank picked up a new LMG, and Dervish got himself a prize, a silenced sniper rifle. We were issued footage of the kidnapping. The girl had been walking to the bus stop when a Stefan pulled up alongside her. The door opened, and a man in a tack suit grabbed her and pulled her in. The van then disappeared, presumably under a mage's invisibility spell. Running on a hunch, 2D hacked the traffic registry system for the compound, and began cross-referencing the feeds from the pressure sensors at stoplights with visual footage from those intersections. It was slow work because another hacker had evidently already been and tried to clean up some tracks mostly editing displacement of materials in the street, though, he'd forgotten the pressure sensors, but 2D caught the van heading north for a few blocks. Then he hit a problem. Namely that the pressure sensors stopped reading and, after checking the cameras, he could confirm that the van was no longer on the road. After a bit of backtracking and reverse editing of footage to reintroduce those discrepancies that the other hacker had removed, 2D's fears were confirmed. The invisible van had started flying. Heyo, can I ask a question? I see several of you guys had enemies as a negative quality but I can nay find it in the book. Is that quality from another source book? It's from Runner's Companion. Vendetta is a modifier quality that can be attached to enemy to make it even nastier. 2D can only give the team a rough estimate that the runners had made for Everett. Given that it would take a bullshit amount of effort for a mage to maintain the flight spell any longer than a few city blocks. Geppetto takes this info and runs with it, summoning a spirit of man since he follows the dark magic tradition and his mentor spirit is adversary, fluffed as Satan. The spirit came out looking kind of like Slender Man showing it the pictures of the girl and the dog, and tells it that it is to return once it has found them in Everett, or once it has exhaustively searched all of Everett and turned up nothing. The spirit returned in the dead of night, when the rest of the team was asleep camped out at Geppetto's place. Geppetto himself was awake, what with the whole being undead and not technically having much of a biological need for it anymore. It had positively identified both girl and dog in the basement of a dockyard warehouse, being kept in some fashion of cage. Dervish was the closest thing we had available to an infiltrator, but we figured if we kept him at a good distance from the warehouse and he merely used his telescoping heat vision man, do I love Max rating Sibri's to scope out the place, then we could get a better idea of what to do. 2D piggybacks into Dervish's Sibri's for additional spotting, and Geppetto assigns the spirit to lead Dervish to the warehouse. We were not banking on two things. One the enemy had someone who could see astrally, as we should have recognized from the flying invisible van shenanigans earlier. Two they had spotted the spirit. The bullet had struck Dervish's skull before he heard it coming. The whole team watched the feed as Dervish fell backwards, and then the view flooded with red. Geppetto screamed for his man's spirit to retrieve Dervish, and to bring him to the hospital as the team scrambled for the hospital themselves. At the hospital, the sin register glitched and identified Dervish as Sergeant Garrett Jordan veteran of the Amazonia conflict. We weren't about to look a gift horse in the mouth, as he was in a coma, with a bullet lodged just into his brain, somewhere between his frontal and temporal lobes. It was bizarrely impersonal, seeing the big, burly, jocular street Sammy just lying there, limp as a ragdoll, his face swathed in bandages, his mouth slightly agape. The doctors told us that he was lucky he had bone lacing orgs, or else the damage could have been a lot worse, but the chances were still high that he wouldn't survive. The team vowed that the chances were high that the enemy running team wouldn't survive, after this bullshit. With nothing left to do for Dervish, we piled back into the van and made for Everett, hoping to catch the team before they left their safe house. Turning the van over to the grid link for the time being, 2D popped his fly spy over to Everett and saw that the enemy team was piling into two vehicles, a sedan and the step van from earlier. Both had polarized windows, so either could have the girl. Taking a 50-50 chance, 2D Dovent began hacking the sedan as the rival mage traced Geppetto's spirit and sent a beast spirit after us. A gigantic wild boar, made ablaze with astral fire, manifested across the freeway from us and began charging the van headlong. 2D was zonked, hacking the sedan, but luckily Geppetto had prepared for this eventuality. My god parent's son, does that make him your god brother, I guess? I wasn't aware if that was a thing. He released a spirit that he'd summoned at the hospital, a fire spirit, a malevolent demon of eldritch flame. The freeway got treated to the closest thing Shadow Run gets, short of dragons, to a cage of battle. With the fire spirit beating the beast spirit off the car and causing serious collateral damage to the adjacent vehicles in the process. Tank loaded stick and shock and went to town on the giant boar, giving Geppetto a brief moment to look back to 2D. 
it was probably a good thing. 2. Considering 2D was boiling blood out of his mouth and nose, dangerously close to flatlining. With a cry of oh fuck Geppetto launched a healing spell at 2D, knitting together 2D's much abused neural synapses. In net space, the two high rating black intrusion countermeasures saw the technomancer that they had just gotten the drop on recompiling. And boy was he pissed 2D moved to a different, and frankly dubiously ethical, tactic. He began spamming weak false sprites at the black IC. Sending them in wave after wave like World War 1 soldiers charging a machine gun entrenchment. Dozens of false sprites lost their lives existences, they're only partially sentient but eventually 2D brute forced his way into control of the node. I know absolutely nothing about Shadowrun, but what's a free sprite, and why did it nearly kill 2D? Sprites are quasi sentient machine ghosts that technomancers summon by basically stripping out a line of code from the matrix, balling it up and then spitting it out with a fraction of their intelligence. They come in multiple varieties, like a data sprite is like Super Google, and a false sprite is like the Norton antivirus from hell. Sprites normally don't last too long, given that they are basically unstable magical computer programs with rudimentary eye. If they do last too long, though, they gain sentience, and mature into a full-blown eye. 2D witnessed his machine sprite becoming free, and it nearly killed him just by virtue of sheer data input to his brain. 2D let out a virtual cry of despair as he activated the sedan's interior cameras. It was a decoy, being driven by a single orc with no passengers. Just one lowly street samurai. Overcome with rage, 2D dubbed the sedan and began piloting it himself, picking up speed and aiming for the nearest concrete wall. The sami noticed what was happening and tried the doors, but found them locked. He busted out the driver's side window and leapt out at about 60 miles an hour, sustaining some serious scrapes in the process. The Sammy knew what fear was when the car he dove out of slowed down, turned around, and then began revving its engine again. Sprinting like a man possessed, the Sammy bobbed and weaved through the buildings and alleyways, under assault from his bloodthirsty high and eye. Every time he made it to a street temporarily inaccessible by the car for a breather, 2D would on the fly hack another passing car, located with his flyby, and thus the evil car ghost would be after the Sammy yet again. A few shin bruises and rough tumbles later, the Sammy had disappeared into an alleyway street market. Curses, more inventive measures would have to be taken if the team wanted anyone left to question, considering that the van was long gone. This was when Geppetto loosed his man's spirit, under the instructions of incapacitate him, and make it creative. As the Sammy is passing through the flea market, his one meat arm just reaches out and grabs the choice ass of a passing lady. At first he begins to think that groping passersby is not the right way to hide from a deranged hacker on a revenge trip, but the voice in his head that is not a spirit of man reassures him. Dude, appreciating some choice ass is never wrong. The woman calls the cops and, instead of the usual lone star flunkies, two night errant badasses pick up, abandoning their coffee and donuts. The voices in their heads ensure them that this is just some 2-bit punk. Easy pickings. Everett street trash. What's wrong with a little police brutality? A man has needs. Needs from back in the days of hunters and mammoths. Violence, man. Violence. No one will vouch for this fuck. No class action lawsuits headed your way. Why not go to town on him? As the knight errant goons, best described as Robocop and his partner, Judge Dredd, pull up and approach the flea market where the street Sammy has all but attached himself to the screaming woman's buttocks. The team began to fear Geppetto's spirits. The team winces and contemplates popcorn as the two super cybered, hardcore cop corp mercs go completely upper shit on the hapless runner. They both start with their stun sticks, but then one starts using the butt of the stun stick, and then the other pulls his sidearm and starts pistol whipping the guy, and it just kind of goes downhill from there. Soon they are working the poor fucker over with just their bare fists, strewing teeth and bits of face all over the sidewalk. The pedestrians scream and run away as the two night errands stand, wiping the blood off of their boots. And then the spirit hits them with another suggestion each and they start going to town on the guy's suburb legs with every hard object available. One of them goes back to the police interceptor and gets a tire iron while the other cracks a kneecap over the curb. The two of them mutually hallucinate that the nearest dumpster is a jail cell, and with a gleeful drawl of boom em, boys, from the man spirit, the cops pick the dude up bodily. Hurl him into the dumpster, slam the lid shut, handcuff the lid handles to each other, and then split from the thurficking donuts with a high five. His lip pursed in appreciation. 2D began to clap for Geppetto. 
the spirit materialized in the view of the nearest security camera, bowed, and disappeared, its services to Geppetto fulfilled. With the flea market cleared out, it was a simple matter for Tank to snap the handcuffs, toss the broken Sammy over his shoulder, and return to the step van. Now, we had a problem. There were two places we could interrogate this guy. One was 2D's place, which had a giant glass facade in front and no basement, but the right atmosphere. That was ruled out, because it was too exposed. The one remaining option was Geppetto's basement, but Geppetto happened to be living with Ariana the adorable 8 year old, and she would probably not take kindly to brutal torture and or information extraction. Thinking quick on his feet, 2D connected to Geppetto's sedan and transferred Geppetto, Tank, and the captive Sammy from the van to the car. Then, washing the blood from the floor of the step van, he called up Geppetto's house. Ariana hello. 2D hey, Ariana, it's Uncle Stuart 2D's fake son's identity was Stuart Pot, local mechanic and 20 cent pop music enthusiast. Ariana hey, Uncle Stuart, when are you, Uncle Vito, and Uncle Garrett going to be back? 2D about that, sweetie. Uncle Garrett isn't going to be in for a while, but your brother and Uncle Vito need the house for a while, so your Aunt Josie and I are taking you to Funland. Ariana girlish screams can I bring my friends? 2D you can bring all of them. 2D picked up Josie, his orc Jagalo girlfriend, briefed her on the situation she just liked being able to go somewhere fun, and, in a position any of his 4chan buddies would have killed for, picked up 5 prepubescent girls in an unmarked grey van. 2D left his comms open. As the hostage came to, in a dark basement, unable to feel his legs, with an elf in a suit and a troll in armor both in balaclavas standing in front of him. He wondered first and foremost why the comlink placed on a nearby table was playing the sound of little girls shrieking on carnival rides. Already off to an awkward start, Geppetto stripped the guy naked, and found himself gawking at the street Sammy's gargantuan elephant dong. This was larger than porn star huge. This was bigger than compensating for something huge. It was down to his knees. Geppetto instinctively stepped to the side for fear that there was a cyber gun of submachine gun or larger caliber hidden in this tube stake. He had a stupidly huge dick, is what I'm saying. There was a brief pause as all involved tried to take in the pure, consolidated weird of the situation, punctuated by 2D bitching about shitty cotton candy over the comms. Geppetto opened up. Who are you working penis? Oh god damn it. G shit's coming up so I may have to call it quits for an hour or two soon. The street Sammy clammed up almost instantaneously, as much stubborn as he was weirded out by the whole ordeal. Frustrated, Geppetto announced into the comlink. Geppetto 2D? Anything you wanna suggest before we resort to violence on this guy? 2D shouting over rides oh wow ha ha dude why would you link me this footage? Okay here's what you do. Tank I don't like this. 2D okay so that's obviously a cyberdic. That's where this guy has really weird surge. So Tank, you're gonna need to start handling his dick. Look for a maintenance port. Tank what? Number. 2D search his dick tank or I'm not helping. Thank you. Okay, there's this little thing that looks like a headphone jack right near his balls. Sammy what are you doing to my dick? Geppetto shut up. 2D so now plug your cum link into his dick. Tank I'm not plugging my cum link into this guy's dick. I don't know where he's been. 2D Geppetto? Geppetto sighing do it, Tank. Sammy oh god why I I I I I. Tank what did you do? Geppetto 2D. Why is my captive's dick sparking and doing loop de loops? 2D teacup ride. With that, 2D hung up. Geppetto called 2D back. Geppetto what the fuck does teacup ride mean? 2D it's in his dick. 2D hung up again, having learned the valuable lesson that the marketing isn't all bullshit, and sometimes dreams do come true at Funland. When security picked him up for hacking the teacup ride, he paid the comparatively paltry fine with a smile on his face, and an announcement of nothing you can tell me will make me sorry, but I will gladly apologize anyway. So, confronted with terminal levels of weird, the Sammy finally spilled his guts. There were two guys leading this operation, a hacker named Two Times, who came from some sort of black ops background, and an elf fissard named Joy, his longtime partner. Two times had some kind of obsessive compulsive duality gimmick, hence the two vehicles, the digital and magical concealment, and the fact that as we learned he had 8 teammates but split them into 2 teams. 2D, sitting boredly in the theme park security office, begins to mash the gears together, and realizes that the captive Sammy is probably on 2 times tacnet. So, working on the assumption of 2 backups, 
always, he checked the node space above Geppetto's home. He found a fly spy surveillance drone. With a grunt of cheeky bastard, he zonked in his chair to begin hacking it. The drone was child's play. The skeleton code, stripped and replaced with a lethal feedback data bomb, wasn't. With an ear-splitting scream, 2D began bleeding from his ears and collapsed onto the pavement of Funland. And with that, I'll call the story till later tonight, since I've got to move. If you guys can keep the thread alive, I'll pick it up in the same thread, if not, I'll start a new one. Meanwhile, across the city, in the trauma ward of Seattle General a pair of Sibiris blinked open, and with a snap, a surgeon went missing. Dr. Dervish retrieved his duffel bag full of gear generously unsearched and, with a cursory glance back at the crisp white hallways of the hospital, he was gone into the night. Geppetto got a call. Geppetto Dervish, what the fuck? You should be in the hospital. Dervish mage. I need a trajectory on the pursuit of the hostage in Everett. Geppetto Dervish, I think 2D is down and... Dervish where are they? Geppetto? Geppetto, I sent some watcher spirits to tell them. They've mostly been dying, though. Their mage is good. Dervish a direction. Mage. Geppetto up, south. Dervish, what's happening? Your. Dervish hung up, and made his own call. Dervish hello, Seattle Tacoma. I'd like to report a bomb threat. 2D awoke on the streets of Funland with Doc Wagon paramedics standing over him, holding a defibrillator and a fuck ton of stims. The resonance was hazy for him, considering he'd been briefly in a coma, but he was able to loosely recognize a few messages from Geppetto buzzing in his vision. While still flat on the pavement, he connected his AR shades and rang up Geppetto. 2D hey Geppetto what's up? Geppetto um, wow, I'm getting some kind of distortion here, you feeling alright? 2D oh I don't kn 0 w my brain just went the way of 3 mile island, Chernobyl or Chicago if I'm b1ng generous but other than that I'm g00d I guess, not like I almost died or anything, Geppetto how long is this going to last? 2D probably like 15 minutes now get to the fucking point, Geppetto so dervish called, 2D what? Geppetto and he was going, what's south of Everett? 2D fuck. Geppetto what's south of Everett that I'm missing? 2D? 2D get 1NY0 a fuck 1NG car right N0W. I'm hacking the C0 and trolls. 2D continued. He's G01NG to the airport. The kidnappers know the heat is on so they're fleeing the UCOS. The team beat a hasty rendezvous in which 2D, driving both vehicles simultaneously, arranged for his girlfriend Josie to take all the little girls home and to then take Ariana to the fucking Forge and Jagalo Wind Farm TM for safety I know, irony. The rest of the team hauled us toward SeaTac in the rigor van. 2D called up Dervish and got no response, so feeling particularly desperate, he searched out Dervish's comb links node, somewhere on the runway of the airport. Wait, not the runway. Was he, was he, on top of the control tower? Bouncing into his back door into Dervish's cyber eyes, 2D found himself staring down a pair of crushers. Dervish blinked reflexively, and spoke, such that his own sensorium would hear him, thus broadcasting to 2D. Dervish hello, hacker, you have arrived just in time to witness me doing our job. Do you see that congregation in hangar C, hacker? Dervish they have foolishly left the hangar doors open. This allowed me to recognize the man who shot me in the head. I very much intend to return the favor. 2D scroll text across Dervish's eyes. 2D Dervish. Dude, we can talk about this. Dervish target sighted. Breathe. 2D Dervish. Seriously, you're jeopardizing. Shortly after the sniper went sprawling, headless from the nose up, across the tarmac, the crushers leveled over the enemy primary street samurai, scrambling for cover at the death of the sniper. Dervish target sighted. Breathe. 2D seriously. The street Sammy dropped like a rock with a burst of pink mist. Go on. Also can we milk another session's worth of story out of you? I fucking love Shadowrun, and I don't see anywhere near as many stories as I would like about it. Also, is this SR3 or 4? Damn, you guys seem to be getting butt fucked pretty hard this game. A lot worse than the previous ones. SR4. And I'll keep going till the end of this run. At the very least, at this point the GM had stopped pulling punches. He let us know that we were walking into a fully adaptable, enemy controlled situation and he'd be treating things as such. Dervish planted one in another hired muscle before the rest of the rival team had scrambled to close the hangar doors. In the rigor van, 2D screeched in panic and floored it toward the airport, grossly violating the speed limit. Back in net space, 
2D noticed through a dervish's eyes as the dying street samurai and thug began levitating towards the remaining crack of the hangar doors. Without a second thought, he sighted their heads, and planted a second shot in each. There would be no healing on his watch. The deed done, and without any remaining advantage from sniping, he activated Trout's tax suit which 2D had not noticed he was wearing and rappelled to the tarmac below. Run for Nolly music. 2D, Geppetto, and Tank arrived at the airport to find it swarming with Knight Errant, due to the high profile bomb threat. Before they could get on the tarmac, Knight Errant stopped the team, demanding clearance. 2D hastily bullshitted up some fake digital clearances for himself and Geppetto, but the troll with the LMG and a real sin, which couldn't be modified on the fly was not going to fly. Thinking on his feet, Geppetto summoned a spirit of man to drive one of the knights postal. During the ensuring spree shooting, 2D was able to floor it onto the tarmac, albeit not in a subtle fashion. On the way in, the step van was buzzed by a military landing chopper, en route for the very hangar that they were rushing towards. It was jet black, and marked. This was some serious shit. That last sentence was all but confirmed as a squad of Ra's Knight Errant, in full hot zone loadout gear, poured out of the helicopter, battle rifles readied. They breached the hangar, and then, there was a suspicious lack of gunfire. The team knew that they'd been hired by Raz, though, and Firewatch was the best of the best, so this was a good thing, right? Imagine our surprise when the hangar opened again, and we saw a prop plane with thick armor plating making its way to the runway, escorted by the commando team. Devish this doesn't make sense. You can't bribe Firewatch. 2D worked it out first. 2D number. Fuck no. Fuck me in the ear with a troll's dick. We're screwed. Geppetto what? 2D they weren't bribed. We're working against Raz. This whole time we've been jeeking in Raz sponsored running team. Dervish approach the plane. Dervish the mission is still on. 2D no it's fucking not. I'm calling the Johnson. With my awesome brain. And telling him that the job is off. He has a small dick. And I hope he enjoys getting fragged by Raz. This mission is done. Clear the fuck out. Dervish, standing further down the runway, seemed to have a brief seizure. As he blinked rapidly, a tone of softness seemed to return to his voice. Dervish oh, oh fuck, activating his skimmers, Dervish boosted back to the van as fast as he could go, recognizing the mortal danger that the team was suddenly in. The team voted to reconvene at Geppetto's place, or, rather, Geppetto, Tank, and Dervish voted for that. 2D wanted to flee to the sewers and never come out again. 2D this is so fucked, this is so fucked, seriously, Tank, leave your shit, we need to get out of here, Tank I left my backup guns in Geppetto's house, I gotta get em back, 2D dude I'm calling it now there's a bomb in there, 2D dove into the nearest dumpster the second time this saved him from danger in his life as Tank opened the front door, and was promptly blasted back across the street by the resultant house shattering explosion, Ra's night errand sirens lit up the night, closing fast, 2D told you fucking so. By the way there's an Raz Hunter drone 2 miles above us right now. Now get in the van you bastards, we're going to the sewer main. Tank was rather the worse for wear at this point, but all things considered it was probably for the best that it was the big dumb troll who opened the door. Since he was the only one who wouldn't have been put critical by the explosion. He was dropped in the nearest sewer entrance and, as per 2D's suggestion, the team went dark, separated into different parts of town, and dropped into different areas of the sewers one at a time. 2D was the last one, so he had no idea what he was dealing with when he entered the sewers. Namely, he didn't expect the Firewatch team that would be waiting for him, ordering him to kneel on the floor or die, as the team, all of whom had been captured individually, were lined up against a wall beneath a storm drain, and Ra's agent walked through the ranks of Firewatch, who were organized with disturbing similarity to a firing squad. The agent smiled grimly, and explained the situation to the team. Both teams had been hired on by legitimate Ra's authorities. These two authorities just happened to be involved in an interdepartmental conflict. The agent reprimanded us. We had been captured by the faction that we'd been hired by. But imagine if we'd been so foolish as to get captured by the faction we were running against. Why, we'd probably be dead in the sewers right now. Now, here was the deal. Mr. Wilkins was part of a pivotal conflict against Mr. Bradford Nice's department. This was part of a much larger conflict between heads Damien Knight and Arthur Vogel. Mr. Nice had organized the kidnapping of Mr. Wilkins' daughter, to better grease the wheels of reintegration into the local Raz branch. There was, however, a loose end. Pluton the Scottish Terrier. 
you see. One talented and rather infamous shadow runner by the name of Two Times had decided that, upon delivering the girl to safety, he wanted to keep Plutan the dog. This would not normally have been a problem, but Plutan was no ordinary Scotty. He was a biodrone, a data dog aspirine from Cowboy Bebop, and he had some rather potent Raz company secrets on him. It was unknown whether Two Times wanted the dog for this data, or just as an attack against Raz, but this was quite the blow. And, as it just so happened, Raz had found some shadow runners that had the bone to pick with Mr. Two Times. Namely, us. We had two options. One find Two Times, kill him, and retrieve the dog, and in the process be richly rewarded with millions of Nguyen. To be ignominiously summary executed in a sewer in Auburn. It took a little thought, but we went with option 1. Raz generously gave us what little intel they had on Joy, two times partner in crime. Namely, that he was known to be a compulsively big spender in Vegas, and he had just made tens of thousands of Nguyen from the kidnap job. So, that was where we were going first, and we had a day to say goodbye to our contacts in Seattle. Off to find a disguise adept in the city of Sin. With that, I'll call it for the night, since I need to do some app work. I'll stick around as per the usual to answer questions, though, and I can give you a pretty good eat on Shador and story time 5. Namely, sometime in the afternoon evening tomorrow. Oh boy, nothing better than a good dystopian future mega corporation in fighting. It's to spice things up. I fucking love that. Um, I remember there was a book I read years ago. It was done by the guy that did... You know what, the Artemis Fowl books? I can't remember what it is now, but it was very similar, I can't remember. Someone, I, I'll probably end up looking it up after this, to be honest with you, it just came into my head. But no, no, uh, that bit also it gave me a bit of a ghost in the vibe shell, like, you know, I love that. Like, you know, there's something about the, I don't even know how to describe it, it's the whole, like, you know, see the whole Shadowrun universe, it's the whole aesthetic and feel, with that mixed in with that hyper-violence, it really fucking does it for me, like, you know, and it's the same thing that does it for me with 40k, you know what I mean, it's the whole aesthetic with the whole grim, dark feel, dude, it. it's a feel with the universe for me, I'm very, like, you know, you can, well, look, you can't have to tell I'm a bit of an edgy boy, you know, um, also, I'm really enjoying this, this is one of, I, I, I didn't actually expect I would enjoy this as much as what I am, um, but look, like, you know, let us know your favourite bit down below. I'm really loving Darvish at the moment. There's something about him. I really love Darvish and I really love... I also, I like all of them. Like, you know, I really couldn't say I've got a favourite so far. But, you know, let us know what you think down below. And, like, you know, if you want to stay up to speed with this series, like, you know, there's tons of parts to it. It's going to be going for a good long while. Uh, definitely remember to like and subscribe to stay up to speed and all that other good shit. And, like, you know, like, um, check out the Discord, maybe, or the Patreon. I don't know. Just see what you feel like while you're down there. Enjoy. I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You this, might just find something this you like. This is not okay. This needs to stop. Now, this is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this, please?